Hi guys, how are you doing and welcome back. For some time now I've been running PF Blocker NG on my PFSense firewall. It is a very nice experience because it blocks a lot of ads, a lot of tracking and a lot of telemetry and all my devices, all the users in my network are benefiting from that. But if you look close into the package manager of PFSense, you can see that there are two packages for PF Blocker NG. One is the PF Blocker NG itself and the other one is PF Blocker NG hyphen Devel, short for development. Now, the reason for those two versions being there, it's pretty clear. You can see it in the version number as well. The PF Blocker NG, that's the production version, so to speak, and the PF Blocker NG hyphen Devel, that's the development version for testing new features, new code. And basically it is a testing ground for the for BBCAN177, the maintainer and the owner of a PF Blocker NG. So um, it is feature wise, it's uh, running uh, in front of the PF Blocker NG production version. Um, and in this video, I will show you why I switched from the production to the development version uh, and how you can do it while keeping all your settings in there. So you don't have to reinstall anything if you're running PF Blocker NG and you want to switch to the development version because there are features there which you are basically uh, waiting for or you want to test or you want to um, be a test candidate for development and new features and new code in PF Blocker NG. How can you migrate from the production version to the development version whilst keeping all your settings? all your black block list and also all your domains and whitelist in there. So in this video, I will show you how to do it. And well, let's get into it. Now, as I said, I am running PF Blocker NG on my PFSense uh, firewall. This is PFSense CE version 2.7.2. And the package I'm running here is PF Blocker NG version 3.2.0.8. This is the production version. Let's call it the production version. So if you go into the package manager and look for other PF blocker packages, this is the install packages list. And as you can see here, I am running the production version of PF blocker NG. But if you click on available packages and then search for PF blocker, you will see that the development version pops up here as well. Now, the development version, it has a another version number. It is 3.2.0.20. So it is running in front of the production version. That's obvious because it is a development version. That means it will the version will be higher than the production version. And it is being actively developed and code is being pushed to it. Uh, if you look at the GitHub repository and you can see that BBCAN177, that is the maintainer of PF Blocker, NG and the owner, well, he is doing a lot of um, code changes and commits uh, for the development version. Because the reason why this is happening in the development version is, of course, it is a version being used as a testing ground. So that means new features will become available very early in the development version. And you may benefit from them, but that also means that the development version can be a little bit, well, unstable, right? Not that stable compared to the production version because there is a lot of code changes going on to there. Now, the reason why I want to move from the production version to the development version is I found that some block lists are not being completely or correctly parsed with the production version. And that has already been fixed in the development version because like I said, BBCAN177, he is very actively following the forums of NetGate. Uh, he is very active on Reddit as well. And it has, uh, people has brought it to his attention that some block lists cannot be parsed with PF Blocker NG. And he already made changes to the code that in the development version that has been fixed. So that's one of the, major reasons for me to move from the production version to the development version. Of course, you if you do this, you have to remember, have to realize that the development version can break things. Because if you go to the Reddit thread uh, of uh, PF Blocker NG, you can see that there is a lot of comments in there for the development version. 
breaking the pfSense interface, you have to reboot the firewall, you have to change files using SSH. So keep in mind that using the development version, it's of course um, running all the new features for PF Blocker NG, cutting edge technology, so to speak, but it can break things. So keep that in mind and you will be perfectly fine. Now, the reason I am moving to version 3.0.20, that's because um, as I can see in the comments on the NetGate forums and on Reddit, this version is pretty stable and doing its job very well. So what I want to do is I want to move my PF Blocker NG to PF Blocker NG development, but I want to keep all my settings because I have, well, this is if I go to the PF Blocker tab, I have some feeds set up in here, but as you can imagine, if you're running this for some time, you have accumulated a lot of settings in there. You have a lot of whitelisted domains, maybe. You have regular expressions which are working for you. It is pretty easy to move from PF Blocker NG to the PF Blocker NG development version. If you have PF Blocker NG installed, of course, before starting this, make a backup of your PFSense firewall. So go to the PF Blocker general tab. Make sure that this option, keep settings, is enabled. Basically, this is what will help you maintain all the settings if you move from the to from the uh, the production version to from the stable version to the development version. So keep settings is enabled. I have some settings here for IP and specific networks in there. I have some settings in my DNSBL, so that's fine as well. So what I will do now made sure that my keep settings is enabled. I've made a backup of my PFSense firewall. I will deinstall the PF Blocker NG package, but because I have keep settings enabled, all my settings are still in the configuration file of PFSense. That means if I reinstall PF Blocker NG, it will read those settings and enable them in the uh, graphical interface, in the GUI. So let's do that. Let's go on to the package manager. In my install packages, I will then delete PF Blocker NG, remove it completely, wait for this to finish. And there we are. PF Blocker NG is now gone. If I look at the installed packages, I can see that we don't have PF Blocker NG anymore. And the option is also not in there for the firewall menu. Now, the next thing is go back to the package manager and go to the available packages tab. Now let's type PF blocker ng again, and you will see both versions will pop up because I deinstalled, I uninstalled the production version, the stable version, and the development version is still there. You can clearly see now the version differences, right? This is on running on uh, 08, this is running on 020, a lot of changes in there. So. Let's install the development version. Let's click on install, click on confirm, and let's wait for the system to install the packages. And there we are. PF Blocker ng devel for development is installed successfully. So let's go to the main dashboard. You will see, all right, there are some errors and we need to do a force reload. And that's a thing with PF blocker NG. Every time you, you make a change, you do something with a configuration or you reinstall it, you have to reload the configuration. It's not a live reload. You have to, if you change a configuration uh, item in there, you have to reload it. That's also why we are having this exclamation mark in here. So if we scroll down now, we can see that we have the development version running version 3.2.0.20. So if I go to firewall, click on PF blocker ng and let's go to the update tab. Make sure that we reload everything in here. Let's give it a second to reload. And there we are. If we go back to the main tab now, to the main dashboard, you will see that an exclamation mark is gone. Everything is A-OK. -okay. And if I click on firewall, go to PF Blocker NG. Well, if you uh, mind you that it is still called PF Blocker NG in the menu. 
right? But if you click on it, you will see that you have PF Blocker NG development running. Well, you can see it, of course, in the packages. So if I go to my IP setup, I can see that the settings I had enabled are still enabled. So that's fine. I can see my networks are still selected. All the settings I had there, they are still in place. If I go to the DNSBL tab, I can see that everything is running there, still running as I had configured it. So that's very good. Uh, it has also the blocking option still in there, which I'm using. And of course, the login is enabled, so that's fine. If I go to the DNSBL group, as you can see here, I had a custom block list in there and it is still there. I can open it and it is still the one block list I was using for my testing system. So I am up and running with PF Blocker NG development version. My settings are still there. And that's pretty easy to switch from the, from the PF Blocker NG main version to the development version. Now, of course, make sure that you have a backup for of your PFSense firewall before doing this. And another thing is, if you're using the development version, you have to realize that there can be versions coming for the development versions which can break your PFSense firewall or make the system unstable or make PF Blocker unstable. So. Uh, keep track of the discussions going on on, on the forums um, and see if there is something in there that will break your uh, firewall. Uh, of course, the best option is to have a PFSense running for testing purposes like I have. As always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to click on the like and subscribe buttons below this video. It will help out my channel a lot and it allows me to keep me making these videos for you guys. Of course, if you have comments, leave them in the comment section below and I'll get uh, to them as soon as possible. So for now, take care and see you next time. Bye.